Oh, hello. Welcome to this Fane online event in which me, Richard Herring, will be talking about this book, Al Murray, The Last Hundred Years, Give or Take and all that, uh, with the author, a man who needs no introduction, <laughs> but I'm going to give him one anyway. <laughs> he is a comedian, character comedian. Uh, he studied history at uh, Teddy Hall at Oxford University. I met him in the music room of Teddy Hall in 1988, the first time I ever saw him. Uh, and that is now part of history itself, in yeah. 1988. That's a terrifying yeah. prospect. Uh, he's, uh, he's the host of We Have Ways of Making You Talk, the history podcast with James Holland. And so, so he used to do, he's done a thing called the pub, pub landlord. It didn't really catch on. So will you please welcome the amazing Al Murray, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. Thank you, Richard. It's Al Murray. It was online. 1987. It's even longer it? ago oh than you gosh. think. Yeah, I'm oh, afraid. jeez. And it's that meeting that um, made me get into comedy. Because <laughs> we used to rehearse our sketch show in that room, and you I just remember you... I was with, bringing a drum kit. Yeah, you were coming in long, straggly hair, yeah. which you're back towards... Back to hair, yeah. Yeah, back, it's nice yeah. to see you with hair. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing when you could have hair to not have hair. Um, well, yeah, we... Yes. <laughs> I, I, I sort of don't want to dwell on it, but, I mean, the thing is, is I was meant to go on tour in March. Yeah. March the 21st, we were going back out again. And what I tend to do is, with the clippers, cut my hair the night of the gig, like, ten minutes before I have to go on, because I really, really... I know I've got hair. I really hate having to cut it. And so I thought, well, let's see what happens now. So this is... Yeah. I've not touched this since the, this whole debacle began. Yeah. So, uh it's nice having hair. I have hair. It's very good. It's very uh, Beirut hostage. Yes, it's got, I should be chained to a radiator, really. For this. I mean, I've even got the Beirut geography teacher tweed on. Yeah, I have. Um, <laughs> the second-rate Lebanese uh, high school, yeah. So let's, let's get into it. We've only yeah. got an hour, and there's a lot to talk about with this book. Almay, the last hundred years. You were commissioned to write this during lockdown, Riz. Yeah, yeah. This was, this was a sort of phone call, in, uh, I think, in, in, in mid-April. The conversation was, do you know the book 1066 and all that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course I do. Sellers and Yateman, absolute classic, like, funny book. Yeah. For, like, that was in a million middle-class toilets. <laughs> was King John a bad king or a good king? The barons and all that. Because history used to be studied like that. Mm. And so, would you like to write that book? I said, yes, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to do a Sellers and Yates from Yateman pastiche because that's impossible and foolish. Yeah. Because it's such a brilliant book that the last thing you want to do is try and, you know, it'd be like being asked to write Python sketches. It'd be a, it'd yeah. be a, a stupid thing to say yes to. <laughs> However, I didn't have anything else on. <laughs> no one did. No we? one did, I know. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not claiming, you know, it's my unique moment that. But um, it seemed like a, like a thing to try and take on. As I got into writing it, I realised that really the last 20 years, I couldn't go near. There's a bit about the last 20 years at the end, but I yeah. just couldn't get into it because it is... You know, it's still it's box fresh since 2001, really. And, you, and also the thing you learn about history is the event that at the time is the thing that's like exercising everyone in 70 years' time doesn't look like much. No. Or, or might not be the most important event because you literally don't know what, what's going to happen. You have no idea what's around the corner, which is like Brexit. Like Brexit last year was all anyone could talk about and it's been displaced by a microbe. <laughs> True, but it's a, and also it's a it's a uh, although it's a book that you will learn stuff from. It's yeah. a it's a flippant book. Yeah, and I don't think it's weird. You can be flippant about things that are twenty or thirty years old, even if they're yeah. pretty horrific. Yeah, and so you cut co you cover some you know dark dark. Well, there's times, some horrible things happening, but in the you're last able to be comedic about it yeah. to, when when you know for most of it. Yeah, um, something still still difficult to be yeah. joke, joke about. But I think you know if, it, if it's so close and yeah, if you got into Brexit, if you got into well, because it, it would because it would Trump. be it, look, well, also the other thing is, is it'd be quite boring to rehearse a lot of the things that yeah. have been occupying everyone now. Ch Obviously, and, there's a bit about the Spanish flu pandemic, and you sort of think, oh, I've got to write about pandemic during a pandemic. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> But, but actually, there are some things you can talk about with it. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, you're trying to write a flip book, really, in the end. And, and so to get bogged down in some of the more recent things might... Where are the funnies? And also you might repeat other, what other people are saying and overlap. Yeah. So it's, I'm more interested in sort of uh, cracking wise about the Suez crisis. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. Well, like, for me, I stopped... My, my A-level and O-level stuff stopped at 
the beginning of World War Two. Yeah. So I, so I'm you, not you very. You don't even good. know who won. Yeah. <laughs> Still waiting to find out. So I got it out from the book. <laughs> don't tell you that. Um, but like all the stuff sort of between 1940 and when we started noticing history. Yeah. <laughs> the, what is now history uh, as, as children and teenagers. Uh, you know, I'm not. I wasn't good on it at all. So it was. It was. I found that very interesting to read about Suez properly and work yeah. out what Suez actually was and yeah. who, what Mao Tse Tung, which I don't know really anything about. So, yeah. And I think that is a very good primer. I think this would be a great book to give to anyone who's just about to study history, yeah. even at quite a high level. Well, he, yeah, it's a sort of, yeah, I mean, although I've le- I left an awful lot out, but yeah. that's because it's a short book and also yeah. there's loads of stuff I'm not interested in. Yeah, but, uh, but that's, <laughs> well, all history books should be that. Yeah. Like, it'd yeah. be by, actually by being succinct, which I know we were talking about before and which I found very hard with the book I wrote in lockdown, when you're given less time and less space to write about something, yeah. it's much harder, but I think you also, you really get down to the nub of what you want it to yeah. be about. So yeah. to have to cover Suez in two pages or, yeah. you know, or whatever, yeah. then you actually really get what it's about. And sometimes in a chapter you'll go, well, the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis nothing happened is your sort of, yeah. your praise of yeah. that. In and the then end, you can read a bit more of, about yeah. it if you in want. In the end, nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. nothing. And thank God nothing happened. So it's like one of those, yeah, this Cuban Missile Crisis is a great <laughs> lesson in how getting out of bed in the morning might be a really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if they'd all just thought, oh, oh, let's not bother. Yeah. There's little nuggets in all of it, which is a great. And things that I hadn't heard before with some of them, the, the fact that the Russian submarine had a vote on whether they were going to, yeah. f- to fight back. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one person said no out of the three. One guy said no, save the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- th- quite literally. I mean, the thing is, is there's, there's a second bloke in 1984 or something during, um, that, that I left out, um, largely because when you're writing, trying to write about 100 years, it sort of closes in and you've got, yeah. to, pick your, got to pick your moments. But there, there, there's a guy in 1984 as well who... Um, the, the, uh, NATO were doing a big operation called o- Operation Able Archer or Exercise Able Archer, where they were practicing for if things went terribly wrong in East Germany, in West Germany. And at the same time, I think a flock of geese flew into the Russian radar. Or just there was a glitch, and a bloke went, no, it's a glitch, we don't launch the nukes. So there's two occasions when a Russian bloke going, no, I don't think this is a good idea, (laughs) stopped us all from being, you know, immolated. So I've got got a lot of time for Russian blokes. It's good, but also you think from now to the end of history, wherever that may be, we only need one one (laughs) for the bloke to go, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Because of the Cuban Missile Crisis, this thing that the the Americans find a submarine and they're going to, they're going to, um, uh, uh, then they're depth charging it, basically, and the Russians if they wanted, could reply with a nuclear torpedo. Yeah. And you think, don't do that. <laughs> so you're basically... Cut, it's, 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 it's fascinating, actually, to look at the 20th century as a whole, as a history, which, of course, it is. Yeah. And, you know, it's hard to... Uh, as hard as a, a man born in 1967 to acknowledge that a lot of my life is now history, but that's the way it goes. But it's an extraordinary century when you put it in... And you're basically... It's basically 1914 to 1999 yeah. you're covering. Yeah. But even in that span... The world changed such a well, yeah, huge and, amount in that century. Yeah, and there's the uh, Eric Hobsbawm, um, uh, the, the, the great left-wing historian, the great, and he's a Stalinist, basically, kind of. He used to talk about the, the short 20th century that yeah. he said ran from 1914 to 1990, because basically that's the length of the communist revolution in, sure. in the Soviet Union. And so that, and just that span, it... Just so much happens. The difference between, say, the 19th century and the 20th century is that places are far away in the 19th century, and by the end of the 20th century, nowhere is far away from anywhere, and everything has direct knock-on consequence effects to everywhere else. It was Napoleon who famously said, the way you see the world when you're 18 is how you see the world, is, the, is, mm. is your normal, is just sort of where you set your standard. And I was 18 in 1986, so an awful lot of... <laughs> that period, you know, the, the cusp of the end of the Soviet Union, the end of the um, uh, Warsaw Pact, the Iron Curtain. And I remember the Berlin Wall falling when we were at university. Yeah. And at the time, thinking, oh, what's that all about? <laughs> it's a bit odd, isn't it? But now that is obviously like a massive full stop at the end of that period. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, you're right. So much happens. And also what happens is all the things that we are really concerned with now emerge, and mainly as a result of the Second World War. Yeah. But, so that, and the First World War 
and the Second World War. You can't have the one without the other. Because <laughs> otherwise, what do you call the second one? <laughs> I don't think there's any other... Se- I was trying to think about it. I think, like, any other century, if you got someone who was, like, say, like, we were about 30 at the beginning yeah. and someone who was about 30 at the end and they met up and had a conversation still as 30-year-olds, any other century, I think you'd basically be, yeah, we're more or less the same... Yeah. We're gonna, we've got the same references, we more or less understand yeah. each other. But if I'd, in 2000, if I'd met a 30-year-old from 1900 and yeah. got together, I don't think we'd have had... We'd barely have had anything in common. Even, no, even I don't know. No, yeah, exactly. And, and, it's, and it's, 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 not just the te- it's not just the sort of technology, it's the sort of the tectonic plates of power and how the, yeah. the world completely... I mean, it's the, and it's because of the First World War. When people talk about the First World War being pointless... You just think, well, yeah, but it, it was incredibly consequential. Yeah. You can say it's as pointless as you want, but you don't, you don't get the Russian Revolution without it, or not that one that you get. No, no. You know, and, all, and, and then, which means you don't get Nazism, which means you don't, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, if the 20th century is a drama, the, the 1418 war is the inciting incident, you know, if, you, if you're writing a bad action movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, very early on, you'd talk about this idea of cock-up over conspiracy, yeah. which I think the start of the First World War... Yeah really show so the I mean the Franz Ferdinand thing which I knew quite a lot about the Franz Ferdinand yeah. assassination yeah but you go into quite a lot of detail about how uh, there was a failed attempt yeah he got blood all over the car yeah. and decided to carry on anyway well and the bloke and the bloke <laughs> the bloke who throws the um, who, who throws the first hand grenade yeah um takes his cyanide it doesn't work and then throws himself into a river that's two inches deep <laughs> yeah I mean, we've all, had, we've all had days like that. It's just like, it's so funny. But it's, it's really funny because it's a conspiracy that cocks up. So, the, yeah. so I always think, the, the thing, I think when people are into conspiracy theory, I think the thing they always, the thing they fail to take into account is nothing ever goes according to plan. I mean, for all I know, no one's watching this or this, these cameras aren't even working. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so nothing ever goes according to plan. So the idea that a conspiracy would is really funny. And, and, and after all, the last thing these guys wanted to do was cause the First World War. Yeah, yeah. They were doing that at the Austro-Hungarian Empire. They never, you know, they never imagined Lenin or the millions dead. That wasn't at all what they were planning. So no. the cock up because up of the conspiracy and, well, and then, how shit they were at their yeah. conspiracy is really funny. But that, you know, so that moment, so the car and the second drives down the road, goes the wrong way, sort of... Yeah. They're not sure where to go, and a guy sitting in the coffee goes, "Oh, I've got a gun. Yeah. I was part of this." Yeah, Friendship's like, yeah. "Oh, oh, oh! Look, he's driven past again. Oh well, I will have him then." Yeah. And, and, and what's really funny? Well, not funny, but like, you know, that the, the, after the first attempt to kill him, Franz Ferdinand doesn't go. You know what? I think we should just go home. <laughs> he carries on. He makes his speech, yeah. quite an angry one, going, "Oh, so this is how you welcome uh, your emperor, is it?" <laughs> It's like, it's sort of, it's, it's so bananas. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's such an, you know, and, it, and, and it's so, such an important event. And it also is that sort of butterfly chaos theory thing. And, the, and, and it's quite fashionable to say in history that individuals can't change anything. But, you know, yeah. Princeship completely did. She completely changed the world. Do you think, I mean, no, there's, there's always to think about history, but do you think if that car hadn't taken a wrong turn or if he'd just said, all right, I'm staying in after the first attempt... Do you think the First World War would have still... I mean, everything, it was all... Not like that. It was all... Not, not like that. I mean, no. what's, what, what, what's, what was obviously happening is the European powers were all groping towards having a war with each other. Yeah. And war was becoming seen more and more as a solution to, to um, how you dealt with each other as everyone was trying to get a bite of the imperial yeah. um, apple. But, um, but no, probably not. And, and, and after all... If it hadn't happened then, it wouldn't have happened that year because campaigning season's running out. Because the, the, the other thing that, that you've always got to remember is that you can't start a war like that in the winter. It's not going right. to work. There's camp- all these campaigning season things and the railway timetables and all this sort of stuff come into play. But if, the, if it hadn't happened then it would have happened, when it happened, it probably wouldn't have happened like that. But in a way, that's the thing with history. It did happen like that. So, um, <laughs> there we so, go. Uh, yeah, tough. You know, you can keep, what ifs are for Star Trek? They are. I'm <laughs> top for my time travel uh, as it comes down. Well, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, it's, it's just so fascinating, you know, it's, and, it, and I think it does, again and again, it is cock-up over conspiracy. Yeah, it yeah. is, you know, someone makes a mistake, someone lets someone through. Yeah. You know, they, exactly like you said, there may be a conspiracy involved to make the thing happen, but it's, it's sort of luck. And, I, and people don't... I think the conspiracy theory thing, which is obviously becoming, like, more mainstream every yeah, yeah. day, it's not wanting to acknowledge that the world is that chaotic. You want yeah. to... Be, it's a weird thing where you want to believe somebody's in control of everything. Well, yes, that's essentially what it seems to boil yeah. down to. I mean, and I'll touch on it again with the moon landing. 
you know, uh, that, that you go all the way to the moon and people still don't believe you. I think it's sort of, just for, you know, that's, that's, I think it's really, I mean, I actually think that's really, it's really funny that people don't believe the moon landing happened. It's, yeah. it's funny. And, you know, because 100,000 people worked on it and yet, you know, none of them have said, oh, we didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's America as well, where you could, you could buy someone a nice car and they'll tell you. Yeah. It's not like it's the Soviet <laughs> Union where they might, they might end up in a gulag. You, you know what I mean? All the, yeah. the sort of compulsions are different. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I mean, it, the what if thing is re- and the conspiracy thing, I think they, they, they're, they're trying to answer the same question as well, aren't they? How would the world be if the world wasn't like this? Yeah. Or wasn't how it appears to be? And on our podcast, we talk about the what ifs a lot, you know, because people say, what if the Luftwaffe had, had a different approach in the Battle of Britain? And you kind of think, well, everything about it, they would never would have done. Everything about the way they went yeah. about things. They couldn't have come up with another way of doing what they did. But, you know, I think what what ifs are actually for is reminding you that every moment in history was a present moment when it was occurring. And someone had a load of options in front of them and had to, like, you, like we do right now. Yeah. And this year has been really illustrative of how history works. It's suddenly when there's a pile-up of decisions to make that people make the wrong ones. <laughs> yeah. They drive to Barnard Castle <laughs> you know, and completely destroy their government you know, because they didn't think it through. Yeah. And, 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 and people are people and human and failing and foibled and, yeah. and all those things. But well, it doesn't ever to make, you know, you do start thinking what, and it's in, or as you, the reason you haven't even done the last 20 years is because it's impossible to do, yeah. but your great, great grandchild or whatever it would be who'd be writing the next book in yeah. 21, 20. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you think from the 20 years would definitely be in there? I mean, 9 11's going to definitely be well, in 9/11, there. Well, 9 11 kind of has to be in there, but I'm sure something's going to happen in the next 10 years, China related. You know, because after all, before the First World War, there was a Balkans war before the First World War. It no, never gets talked about in terms of Balkan tension and global tension because it doesn't boil, it doesn't turn into the thing that yeah, yeah. changes the world. Although it's part of that continuum, it just doesn't get it doesn't get sure. included. And I think, and it'd be interesting to see how the pandemics weighed in the scales because after all, I think the really interesting thing about the Spanish flu is when people talk about consequences of the First World War and the and the and the 1920s and 30s. I mean, the Spanish flu kills so many people, like 10 million, 20 million, no one really knows. Yeah. You know, or maybe it was comorbidities and, you know, blah, 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 that, the, that language people are using now. Yeah. But when people do the roundup of the, that, those two decades, they don't really tend to include it. No. But it's obviously incredibly important. Lots of people die, which would inevitably have an effect on, for instance, the labour market and... Yeah. Wage, wage prices and, and all those sort of things. And epidemiology is born out of the Spanish flu. That science begins as a result of the Spanish flu epidemic. Sure. And, um, you know, Fleming is looking for antivirals when he discovers penicillin. Yeah, yeah. And they only just figure out what a virus is because of the Spanish flu. So that's obviously a really important event in terms of the history of medicine. But what it's not got in it is like, uh, you know, an emperor in a, with a spiky helmet <laughs> yeah. or, or, or someone calling for a revolution. So it doesn't sure. have that element to it. So no one's really interested in no, it. No, it's interesting. So, I, I think, I, thinking about it, I don't think, you know, we don't know because we're in the middle of it, but yeah. I think COVID probably wouldn't be, even if it's a bigger deal than it is now, probably won't, in 100 years' time, probably won't be there. I'm not sure Trump in 100 years' time. Well, that's the interesting yeah. thing about Trump is maybe, yeah. he, I mean, you never know. He may be seen as this restraining influence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by, by, the, by the 2050s, there'd be yeah. people going, you know, he was, a, he, he was just trying to keep the lid on things. <laughs> you, you, you never know, because, because after all, politics, politics looks so different when you, zoom, when you zoom out and away yeah. from it. Well, I think that's what it's because it's very much a personal look from what you're interested in, what, yeah. from a UK perspective, yeah. from your perspective. You're very open about that and it's funny about that, but you will still occasionally go into mentioning things from outside that yeah. and say, you know, no one talks about this, no one talks about that, but you're aware of all these wars and incidents that, that well, were I mean, a big deal for the do, people in the middle. Do make a really, uh, I mean, do make a point in the history of the Second World War is trying actually to tell it as a like, because yeah. there's so many plates spinning in that and, the, and the, there's always a meanwhile. Absolutely, and the, the, the thing I try and set up in the book is the idea of a meanwhile, which I remember from my, when I was doing my degree, we were doing this really frightening tutor who lived in the church tower at our college and he did a thing when we were talking about the diplomacy in August of 1939 because I did a, like a module about the last three years of diplomacy up to the Second World War right. which is complete catnip for me in the cabinet papers and the telegram papers and he, he we were talking about 
what Britain was going to do about Germany in August of 39. So ultimatums to Poland, Nazi Soviet pact, all this sort of stuff, which just seems like the main game in town. Yeah. Right. And he goes up ah, and he goes, what was happening in China at this moment? <laughs> and me and my like, I don't know. I've no idea. And he did this and got a book out from behind his head and opened the page and made one of us, I mean, he's a sadist, this guy, yeah. made us read out this thing about the M British embassy in Shanghai that was surrounded by an angry mob and J the Japanese were into, you know, like, yeah, yeah. and suddenly, suddenly there's a meanwhile. So obviously, the, and, and they knew about that at the time, just because we're like focused on the one thing. And that's the, that's the thing with the Second World War. And, and in the, the amount of Chinese people who died in the Second World War, yeah. uh, I think it's two, three million people, right. right? Makes what happened to us and our population look quite small beer when you look at, and it, and it went on for a lot longer because the Japanese invaded Manchuria in 31 and then, and then later in the 30s were present and doing terrible things. Yeah. And yet we don't know about that. <laughs> so I do do a thing again. At this point, most people would not talk about the war in China, yeah. and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And just yeah. ignore it, because we do ignore things. But, you know, and I suppose that is history, though, isn't it? Because yep. history, only certain... <laughs> we can't have all, everything. No, you can't have immediately... Even the newspaper's immediately taking the day down to a certain number of stories, yeah. and then the, the end of year review takes yeah. everything down and some numbers, and then things get forgotten, things get... I mean, the thing, by the end of the book, even things that were, are within my memory... You know, you're talking about uh, uh, Rwanda yep. and, a very, you know, quite a few <laughs> genocides, basically. You're going, oh, yeah, I kind of well, yeah, forgotten that one. Well, and there's that, <laughs> there know? is that, because there's been a lot of talk, um, uh, and I was sort of struck by this when I was writing it. There's been a lot of talk about, how, you know, the 90s were like, the, before everything went to shit. Yeah. And it actually, well, not when you look at it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, because what happened in, uh, and, and the, uh, the Balkans, you know, which is incredibly complicated to write about, because you've got people seceding and then people seceding from the people seceding and then, you know, uh, uh, and, and the confusion of that, like when you're looking at it, you don't know who anyone is or why they might have a beef with each other and all, all, all that from a British perspective, sure. which was always, that's a long way away. It's Yugoslavia, I don't know, is it, where's that? And, um, uh, and so that, I remember at the time, that being taking, seemed, seeming to be an agonisingly long process. But yeah. actually, it all happened quite quickly, relatively speaking. Sure. Yeah, especially when you consider that we're still in Afghanistan 20 years later, yeah. you know, yeah. in one way or another. And, and so, so the 90s is, the 90s, you know, what happened in the Balkans and then what happens in Rwanda, and what happened in Rwanda, you, you know, researching that, you think, blah, Christ, yeah. why, aren't we, why aren't we still talking about this? Why aren't we still going on about this or fix, like fixated on it as a, as a, a red hot lesson of what can happen if you, you stoke racial tension and it, and it all goes off, blows up in your face. Well, as you said, you talk about the racists not really learning the lessons of what happens with racism throughout, throughout right. all of this. Uh, but and Hitler, and the same, the same. Bit about Hitler did Hitler did make racism look really bad. Yeah, and yet we're going, hmm, maybe maybe give it another go. Uh, but you know, as that's it, isn't it? I mean, there's whole civilizations that we have no record of. If you go back through history, you know, that oh. a, a shoe turns up, well, not a shoe, but a, yeah. a pot turns up and go, oh, here's a new, it's a new kind this, of pot. It's a new civilization we didn't know about. Yeah. and so that history is really largely about forgetting <laughs> rather than remembering. Well, and then and then you know. But it is. But this book is, you know, it is your view, uh, and but it's, you know, it's it's well thought through. But that's what all history books really are, and you just cut out all the, well, the flannel. I, I, it, well, it's very. <laughs> I mean, I did make a point in the introduction of saying this book is biased. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it is probably the first history book ever written <laughs> that says that in its introduction, rather than like making a sort of earnest attempt to. to yeah. Uh, Oh, I'm going to address these things that just aren't talked <laughs> but about. But you are, you know, you do, you put the other side and you do talk about stuff that you, despite yourself, it's, it, I, you know, it's a, it, as I say, it's a great primer. It's funny, which is great too. And I think that's a great way to, always a good way to educate, which I think a lot of history books <laughs> forget about. <laughs> you know, and there's so much, there is so much funny stuff in, yeah. in history and history is made to look, you know, sort of dry and, you know, treaties and yeah. we've got to get all the dates and the names right. Yeah. But actually, the minute you bring out any little moment of, you know, I remember reading in some history book about, you know, the Crusades or something about a, a guy mooning the castle and being shot yeah. by an arrow, you know, yeah. that, as that's in one of the accounts. And you go, that's the kind of thing that history books should just chuck that in every now and again, because yeah, yeah. you'll laugh at that and you go, oh, now I'm interested, now well, I've got well, the human... And, and you, they turn into people. Yeah, and there's yeah. a really, I mean, I didn't put it in the book, there's a really funny story about um, 
uh, the Kaiser before, before the First World War. He's at some dinner and he's, he sits down next to the King of Belgium and at the dinner and he says, you know, there's nothing stopping me invading your country, right? That my army could, you know, would have been in Brussels by lunchtime tomorrow if I wanted, right? And the King of Belgium is basically... <laughs> what the fuck? And, and when he leaves, leaves with his helmet on the wrong way round. Because <laughs> he's so freaked out by it. And suddenly they're people. Suddenly they're, yeah. you know, they're, 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 they're not just these sort of... Um, you know, avatars, and very often people in history you use to beam your views through and yeah. use, use to represent who, who you think, you, you know, what you think about them and what you want them to be rather than, than actually being people. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, and a lot of it is that for a lot of politicians and kings, and they can just get through their life without anything too bad happening. They yeah. can sit there. I mean, this is what, you know, this is what we're seeing now. Boris Johnson could easily have just gone, OK, great, I'm in, I'll get this Brexit out of the way, and they're all, you know, well, I've got a plan. I mean, the, there's, a, there's, then... there's a whole chunk of politicians. <laughs> I, I, I always suspect all they really want is a statue. Yeah. I mean, and obviously that then gets thrown in a waterway, but he, he, <laughs> he really... Boris, Boris wants, a, wants to build HS2 and have a statue. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't feel sorry for him, but there, there is an extent to which this year has really, really uh, uh, rained on his particular parade, isn't it? But, you know, if, you, if history overcomes... I think, like, Nicholas II of Russia is yeah. the prime example of this, and in any other time he would probably have bumbled through and it would have, yeah. wouldn't have mattered, but he... You know, it's, but he was caught in that thing of um, he was always too late to figuring things out. Yeah. And he was weak, so he was ineffective. And then people would say, well, you're ineffective. You know, we don't need someone ineffective, but he couldn't be effective. So he was permanently trapped. The Russian state was weird because it was big and acted tyrannous, but was actually really weak and decentralised and there wasn't a lot he could do. Yeah. And so he was sort of... Whenever anyone came to him and said, could you sort this out... He couldn't do it. No. He, he just, so, but then he kept on taking charge. I mean, do you think he believed that he was... Because the divine right... He had, some, he had he some divine right stuff going around he believes in his it, head. Which, yeah, you know, he you've got, it. That's there to make people think you should be there. That's yeah. not for you. <laughs> Yeah, someone forgot to go. The divine right of kings bit is just so that well, we look, but, well, it's, well, we have it, well, a reason well, to do it. Well, and it's like um, Hitler ending up um, believing his own hype. Yeah. I mean, that, that he was a, a, a messianic genius sent to save... Germany, which obviously yeah. wasn't, um, uh, but it, it, it's it's. That, I mean, you know, that's the modern way of looking at it. You know, after yeah. all, you're you're right. Divine right of kings is hype, basically, <laughs> isn't it? it is. Well, and that's self. It is that self. Presumably, Hitler, when he was, as you say in the book, you know, the war was sort of over in 1942 or 43. 43. The, by by yeah. mid 43, yeah. there is there is nothing they can do. Yeah. To, to do anything other than lose horribly. And so, do you think he just want, is, is he being Donald Trump and just throwing the toys out the pram and going, right, you're all going down with me? Or does he think, I'm, I really believe <laughs> that I'm, it's going to turn around and I'm. Because, I, I, he, you know, he did, he did well, it, just everything went his way for a few years. Yes, it's several things. I mean, but he, he really did believe in, you know, like a gutter demering thing that it, it was literally death or glory. Yeah. And if you weren't going to get the glory, you'd. You'd, you'd opt for death, yeah. uh, uh, and and the, I mean it. You know, the 1940 by the middle of 1943, it's over. There's no, there's literally nothing they can do to w to win. Literally nothing they can do to force a stalemate. Literally nothing they can do to to bring anyone to the negotiating table. Yeah. They just they've gone too far. And also, there's nothing. They, there's nothing that effect. They can blunt Allied efforts to to win the war. The Germans, but there's nothing they can do. By but by July '43, the the firebombing on Hamburg happens, where the Allies in three days completely destroy a city, kill more people than were killed in Britain in the Blitz, right. basically. Mm. And the Germans, the Germans go, oh well, uh, we're still we're, we're still <laughs> going to win. And Goebbels does his famous total war speech. Oh, we're still going to win. We're still going to. We're still going to turn this around, and, and, and they, they know they they know they can't, and everything they do is simply prolonging the moment yeah. and the agony and the death and the and, and also because the other thing is the Holocaust is a genuine front that they're concerned with maintaining. Yeah, so they want to try and get the they're trying to get Holoc yeah. the Holocaust done. Yeah, to, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. they want to stay. So you know, it's, I mean, which it's, is all. Uh, I mean, for the book, I did write. Um, I wrote fifteen, twenty thousand words of. You know, basically GCSE Nazis, right? So, my, my, both of my um, uh, elder daughters have studied have studied history. Um, uh, to a, they're studying it. To, Willow, my middle daughter, is studying it to A level. She did GCSE history, and they do GCSE Nazis. Yeah. And like you say, they get to 1939, 
and then the war starts, and, and then and there's literally not. It's like a cliff edge, isn't it? You know, <laughs> you're supposed to. I don't know. Go find that out for yourself. And I'd written all this stuff, and and you know about the Enabling Act and the KFD and all this sort of stuff, and the difference between the SS and the SD and the Night of the Long Lives. And in the end, you're just thinking, oh God, this is just Hitler, 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 Hitler. So that's what the that's what that chapter turned into. Because yeah. when you get bogged down in that him it how they thought what they were trying to do you end up feeling dirty i remember when we were working on um when we were doing time gentlemen please a long long time ago we were both reading the kershaw hitler yeah. biography and i remember sitting on a beach in, beach in greece with his face <laughs> yeah. hitler's face on the paperback like you're thinking, what does this, what does this look like? You know, the Greek, they don't particularly like the Germans in Greece, and I'm saying it with this big Hitler book. And I remember reading that and just coming away from it, feeling sort of, feeling made dirty by it, yeah. by, by the thinking, because he lays out his thinking in that book really clearly, and just sort of made foul by it. And so in the end, I thought, well, I can't, I can't actually have this in the book. Right. Because it's too horrible. Yeah. Well, I think that's but that's right. I mean, you know, and also you... he overshadows everything. I mean, yeah. even the fact the fact that people just cannot stop comparing everything to the Nazis. And Godwin's Godwin's law was a joke twenty years ago, and now it's just like what people do all the time. You know, yeah. Trump's like Hitler. We, we, oh, more differences, to be honest, yeah. than similarities. Well, and, the and problem so is, on, the more know. that happens, then the, when the the one who is like Hitler turns up, you know, you've said it so much that you might not go, notice him. You yeah. said that about the last ten yeah, yeah, Hitlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it is. It's a. Uh, and the other reason, the, <clears throat> the other reason it's beguiling is because there's footage. Yeah. And so you, pe- you, you, you maybe should be comparing Trump to some 19th century American. Uh, president actually but there's footage of Hitler you know turning up at a rally so you can go oh look it's a rally it looks the same so it must be the same thing yeah. and I think part of the history of the 20th century that the, the reason people are so hung up on the 20th century it's not just because it's the most recent because you can you, you can watch it on channel 5 you yeah. know you, you can watch <laughs> it in a way that you can't digest the revolutions of the 1848 or, yeah. or or whatever you know yeah no it's interesting um and so let's, so with the writing process, I mean, that's interesting that you wrote so much about something that isn't then in the book. Yeah. Was there a lot of stuff? I mean, because that, that's what I thought. I've, I've written a book in lockdown as well. I'll just let you What's see. it called? The Problem the with problem Men? The Problem with Men. Well, there's, there, is, there, is some, there is some crossover in that it's about, I mean, you know, Hitler's the example of <laughs> a man having too much confidence. And you do talk about feminism, the, great, the birth of feminism in your book as well, of course, which is a, another great event of the 20th century. But how... How did you? How difficult did you find to it to get this down to the length? Really, of the book? really hard. Yeah. Really, really difficult. And um, and I was b- massively behind at one point. Yeah. Because I found writing a lockdown really, really difficult. Cause, yeah. Because normally I'm going somewhere. I've got a gig. I'm seeing people. You got all this extra stimulus, and that's how I normally work. And I really like I like hot deadlines and writing right up to a deadline. I find that really good. But. The, it, that was sort of absent. Yeah. Um, so I found that quite. I found that quite difficult. But it was. Uh, uh, we got away to France for like five days in, before, you know, everything got shut down again. Or travel got shut down again, and I really blitzed the book there. Right. We used it as a deadline, and I wrote. <clears throat> I did write. I did. I did write twelve, fifteen thousand words about Nazis in the thirties. Right. And then thought, nah. No, I'm just going to cut that. It's a waste of time. Sure. And and the and what was interesting is the editor went, "Thank God for that." <laughs> <laughs> so so, but but there's, there's some there's quite a lot. Do you go back and you go, "That's too long. It's too long. It's too long. It's too long." I've yeah. got to reduce this. I've got to try and get get it down. But then you end up thinking, "Is all I'm offering like this happened? Then that happened, and there's no flavour." Yeah. Um, and you know it's meant to be a, it's meant to be a funny book, yeah. and so that's the that's the tricky bit is you want to you want, and it's the, it's sort of like the old sitcom problem of um, plot versus jokes versus character. Yeah. <laughs> my book, I found my book very very difficult to write, partly because you know we were looking after our children, yeah. partly because you're actually in the house and. If you're not, you know, if you have one of those moments where you're sitting there and nothing's coming and, yeah. you know, your wife's downstairs homeschooling two kids, you kind of think, 
I'm like, can I really just sit up here <laughs> playing on my phone? Because <laughs> I'm not doing any work. So you sort of, you have to go downstairs and help out, right? We don't talk, do, about, we yeah. don't talk about <laughs> this. We don't, no one needs to know <laughs> about this. Bad. But actually, by, <laughs> by trying, you know, like I had to do a chapter about, in the end, the whole Black Lives Matter thing coming up and linked into the Wednesday International Men's Day of my thing. And, you know, I knew I only had a thousand words to cover that in as a, as a white man. And, it, and it's, that's difficult. You know, you're doing vast waves of yeah. history, even from a UK point of view. But by, by really having to focus on it and work on that, and, yeah. you know, that chapter I found especially difficult, I have to say, out of I all of imagine. Them. But, you know, what you come down to, hopefully, in that thousand words, with not many laughs in that chapter, but still some laughs in that chapter, uh, you know, you've got something that's very solid because it's so, you've got to be so precise. Yeah. And I think that's true, even even when you're being deliberately woolly sometimes and saying, oh, yeah. you know, I don't know what, you know, I haven't got time to talk about this or whatever. Yeah. But it's, you're very precise. I think, you know, you do learn from this book is what, is, that's what I like about it. Well, that's good. You're but, laughing and learning. It's well, the, that's good it's to know. Laughing, and, laughing learning. and learning. But so, did you find that, do you think that's, do you think that that difficulty of that process is what makes it work as a book, do you think? Yes, I if think. If you've been given 120,000 Oh, words, I think so, have, because, because actually I have tried writing actual history. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, because I'm, because I'm doing this podcast, I'm talking about history all the time. And, and, and very often we, we talk about why he, why we're interested in it, and you know, because there's been there has been so much debate about history this year, and the sort of preposterous idea that you don't rewrite history, yeah. whereas in fact history is literally the process of rewriting <laughs> history. There's, yeah. there's no other there's, there's no other way of describing it. I think you know, uh, and and necessarily. <laughs> Every history book ever written has been written about the present yes. and using the past to digest the present. That's just obviously how it's always worked. Yeah. And you, 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 you know, you, you, because, you can't, because I can't write a book about the 1940s with a 1940s perspective because I don't have one. No. Right? It, it's, in, it's impossible. <laughs> and so... Uh, 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 and, so and you couldn't write it in the 1940s because you don't... You know, because you don't know what, you don't you know don't know what the history is. And you yet. don't know yeah, the perspective yeah, exactly, of everything exactly, else. So, exactly. you know, it is, you need that distance to really, yeah. Yeah, yeah. To really understand yeah. what's been yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and very often... You need everyone to be dead. Um, because, I mean, one of the interesting things, one of the other reasons that I sort of kind of shied away from the last 20 years is there's one or two people in the book from the 1980s who are still with us. Yeah. And we did have a little bit of, um, like, you can't say that because they might sue. Right. And, you know, the, 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 great, thing about, the great thing about history <laughs> is the dead can't sue. So you can yeah. say someone was a raving lunatic or, or like, uh, a, a, an indecisive twat or whatever, you can, you can say that about yeah. dead people, yeah. but you're not really allowed to you know, you, you cause yourself problems saying it about the living. Yeah. So, I mean, that's like a raw legal acknowledgement of that, you know, when people, when people are dead, their reputations belong to everyone else. And, you know, interestingly, a lot of Second World War history was written by the protagonists. You know, Churchill famously, although I don't think he ever did actually say, um, history would be kind to me because I intend to write it. I think that's one of those quotes that's like, stuck to him yeah like look because most Churchill quotes when you investigate them he never said them <laughs> they've like stuck to him like magnets yeah. like that I think in the in the morning madam I'll be sober yeah. didn't say that oh. there's a whole load right yeah. apparently right um uh, and so the problem with the second world war is most of it, a lot of it was written by by the, the people who took part in it the second world, history of the second world war written by Winston Churchill was written during the cold war um, and for a Cold War audience, and to try and keep the, the North Atlantic um, uh, alliance alive. So mm -hmm. that, that's what that book's about, sure. as much as it's about what happened during the war. Yeah. So you need people, you need these people in the ground <laughs> so you can write about them. <laughs> and stuff comes out, doesn't it? Like yeah. the, the thing is, you know, things are kept secret for yeah. 150 or yeah. 100 years or whatever, and then the stuff comes out and you go, oh, here's the evidence that proves yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know. And often so, they're completely the other way up. Yeah. Because, because the other, I mean, you know, I th always think it's tedious when we go, oh, there's the word story in history. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't come from that. It's not, it's not what, that's not what that means, thank yeah. you very much. But for instance, like the, the Battle of Britain, the, you, you still see it now, the version of events that became the received version, which is literally the wrong way round, literally upside down. A re recounting of the events of that summer. Yeah, it's just wrong. It's the wrong way round. But it's a. But it's a. It's the. If I were telling that story about myself, which is after all what a lot of national history is about, is you telling stories about yourself to define who you are now. Yeah, that's the story I'd tell. I was the plucky underdog. That's yeah. the story I'd tell about myself. You know, you, you're the hero of all your own 
Sure. Well, it's like we, we both Memories. went to see that guy, Chambers, uh, we've read his book as well about The Great Escape, which yeah. is obviously been mythologised one way, and then if you look at the, the truth of it, uh, still an amazing event, but there's... there's oh, it's there's, incredible. <laughs> I mean, but that, 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 but, 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 but that, that, that lecture guy gave was so interesting, because one of the first points he made in it that just never, ever occurred to me is that that Stalag Luft, that, that prison war, of war camp, was full of blokes who'd been in plane crashes, right? Yeah. So they might have all been like nervous wrecks. So yeah. they're like, well, I, don't want to, I don't want to dig a tunnel and try and escape. Like, I've had enough drama in my yeah, life, yeah. thanks very much. And that had just, that had never occurred to me before. And, and, and that's, again, that's that human thing. That's that, like put, putting people into these stories sure. rather than needing them to be simplistic and black and white and heroes and villains, you know. Sure. And the other thing I find, you know, the other thing increasing as you get older, we're both in our early 50s now. Yeah. Um, maybe getting to our mid 50s. Uh, well, you're, you're close. To <laughs> but, you know, so <laughs> the, the World War II is 80 years but, but yeah. away, and, and 1980 is half. We're half. I know. It's, it's halfway between well, the Falklands. Well, the impossible. Falklands War is closer to the Second World War than it is to us now. Sure, right. Um, which, which just seems, which seems amazing, really. Because yeah. that, when I was, that I was 14 with that, and that was like such a dominant event in our, in in the national discourse and in politics and everything. It's like a massive thing. Yeah. And now it's like, it, 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 you know, in, in lots of ways, it is like, um, it's like they're like dis- the past is like dis- distant galaxies. You know, the, <laughs> the the further away a star is, the older the light is. Yeah. And events are like that, and the, you know, that the, the, they the, they dim they dim away. It's like the Great Depression. When you look at the numbers involved in the Great Depression, you think, oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> but at the time, it was dust bowls. Yeah. But it's kind of hard. I find that there was a just... I and mean, you do talk about popular culture a little bit in this book, which we'll get on to. But there was uh, just there was a tweet last week about the goodies being started 50 years ago. And, but then, which I can just about believe, but Harry Enfield's television programme started 30, 30 years, years ago. ago. I know. <laughs> That's the thing. And so there's this weird way, isn't there, the time kind of concertinas... And... Time comp- that, that time compression, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I so... think when you look, at, particularly in pop, pop culture, it's that thing, you know, the Beatles is seven years... Yeah. Which is incomprehensible. That's as long as it takes you two to make an album. Like, it's like... <laughs> and, and seven years of your life, like, can, can seem like a... Can seem like just a tumble. Yeah. Like, how do they fit all that into... It's impossible. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, you, do, you write about the Beatles, you write about punk. Yeah. Um, and you cover quite a bit of music and stuff like that. But, but, you know, you do... I love the idea of... I think this... It reminds me of something we nearly did in, in one of our very first radio shows with this idea that sex began in 1960, which yeah. is, you know, not, not an unknown thing to say before, but in the book you say there was no sex before 1960 and that's when it came up. But the Beatles, that sea change in that decade yeah. Yeah. is from Prosumo onwards. But to be more serious about that, that's all because of the war. Yeah. It's, it's that, you know, everything, everything's been tossed up into... But yeah, but the sex thing is just because... I mean, I, that chapter, I wrote that because... If you didn't know better from the way people talk about the 60s, that sex was literally invented in the 1960s. Yeah. And I have to say, I mean, I, as a child of the 80s, I used to get really, really fed up with people going on about the 60s. And the, the, you get this... I remember when we were students, there was a whole thing, where's the spirit of 1968? I think, well, it's 1988. We were concerned with our things, not what, yeah. you know, shut up. And the, and the 60s, for me, I mean, obviously, it's an amazing decade and incredible things happen. And all of them, like... The, uh, and, again, a lot of them that we're still kind of, like, dealing with. And the tone for an awful lot of stuff was set in that decade. But could people stop going on about it? I mean, honestly, and also all the people who... They're all, they're all in their 80s now, so I'm not, not interested in what a load of old farts have to say about Sergeant Pepper. It's ha- so I'm really ambivalent about it, because I also lo- I love the Beatles. And- yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's... But like, see, my parents got married in 19... I think 1960 or 1961. Yeah. And so they were, they were settled down before any of this all happened. So my parents feel like the, the previous generation to yeah. that, if they'd even stayed single till they were 30, they would be the next... They would yeah. be <laughs> the next yeah. generation. But there's a definite cut-off point, I think. Oh, between, there very much is. It, and it's, it, yeah, and, and it's national service. Yeah. My parents, I think, were married in 61 or right. 60, something or 60. Early 60s, anyway. So they're not, they're, you know, they're, my mum likes rock around the clock. The, right. Beatles, the Beatles are, not, you know, nothing they should just know but about. But then it. I think that impacts on the way our generation's watching. brought up, because I, I was brought up in quite a, in a stricter way than I think someone would have been four or five years later. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, yeah. certainly my brother even was brought up, who was five or six years older than me, with, they were much stricter, so they got yeah. a little bit less strict with me. But, it, but I think then that <laughs> impacts, and I suppose that feeds into my book as well, about men, um, you know, there was that sort of distance, I think, between fathers and sons that, you know, that we, I don't think well, our generation I mean, do, has. But, well, no, and um, uh, last year, um, I played a gig with one of the bands I'm in, um, in, in this little stinky club in Soho, um, the Samaritz, which is a little Swiss bar that does gigs in the basement. And I took my daughter Willow with me. And we're afterwards, you know, and we had a great gig and we're all having a drink afterwards. And, and, um, and I said to her, I actually, I cannot think of anything at all analogous that me and my father did <laughs> yes. like this. My dad never took me to one of his gigs. And then we had a beer afterwards <laughs> surrounded by, um, you know, like just like hip people in London and, and other musicians. It's just a... What? <laughs> like, and he never, he'd never have imagined to, if he'd been doing, I mean, he never would have done a thing. No. You know, he'd never brought me along to a thing like that. I'd have never got involved. It's just like, the, the music was, music was sort of paired off and, or culture felt much more paired off generationally. And that's all yeah. gone. Yeah, yeah. I think. Or certainly, or not all gone, but it's changed enormously. And that's the 60s. That's the 60s catalyzing everything. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's, it. And, and, you know, feminism's sort of having that, that sort of second wave, I suppose, in the 60s and, and sort of... Yeah, although my, my feeling about feminism, the, the, the thing I think is really funny about, not funny about feminism, but funny about the reaction is how stupid people have been in reaction to it. It's sort of amazing. It's amazing how stupid lots of people have reacted to an awful lot of it. The sort of hoops that feminism has been forced to jump through by men, basically. And I try and articulate in the book about, it's about people still talk about burning bras. And that's like... That's longer ago than the goodies. <laughs> <laughs> there are still many, oh, they want to burn their bras. It's like, you're just, all you're telling us there is you're obsessed with boobs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, but... Well, but, that's, <laughs> <laughs> well, but, you know, I think from my, the, my book, sort of about, you know, male suspicion, you know, that's the, that's the, the terrible thing that it's, it's maybe getting worse in, in certain quarters anyway toward, towards... And, and, and I think with my book, that realisation, again, in lockdown partly, that was my, lockdown really informed my book, just because that realisation that, you know, that, that sort of attitude has informed what we're going through with reactions to COVID, with government reactions to COVID, with people's reactions to statues being pulled down and, yeah. and Black Lives Matter. Th those reactions, are, they were all sort of implicit still. In, they, it hasn't been sorted out. No. Maybe because people were just told they had to toe the line and they didn't. They weren't actually convinced, but you would think it should be easy to convince people yeah. that equality is beneficial well, to it's everyone. Not, but it's, it's, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because because it doesn't seem like they're asking much. No, <laughs> you know, it's, what, it's, what, it's, it's very often with these things. You know, the, yeah. the, 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 it doesn't seem like a particularly big ask. You know, like could you treat us the way you'd expect to be treated? It's, yeah. it, it's you know, and you, and you kind of think. Didn't Jesus say something like that? You know, like, so it's like, so this, bit, this idea has been lying around for an awfully long time. Well, you know, it, what this book shows, I think, what your book shows is, you know, how things have changed so fast. So every generation has been challenged. In history, there might have been a generational event that challenged the, you know, the Industrial yeah. Revolution yeah. Or, or, or some kind of cultural revolution, some kind of philosophical revolution. But pretty much every... If you look at the beginning of the 20th century and women don't have votes and... Yeah. Uh, well, you know, absolutely everything. Em, the, em, imperialism, empires yeah. are everything. Uh, and you look at the end of the 20th century and see how, how different it is. Even you look at 1980 and 1990, you know, the... the the massive revolution yeah. in technology and yeah. that, that happened just during our own lifetimes. The number of musical formats we've been through in our lifetime, which, you know, my grandparents would have had a record, a phonographic record, a little gramophone record, and that would have been it. And we've been through four or five yeah. in, in the yeah, yeah. Well, four and, or five decades. With more, with, definitely with more to go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and so, you know, that, those changes, it's difficult to react, isn't it? When you think that the human race for you know, quarter of a million years had one tool. Yeah. And that was so, if you'd done, if you'd done the 100 years between, you know, 10,000 BC and 9,900 yeah. 9, BC, there would be literally no difference. You wouldn't, yeah. and then someone would have come along and, oh, I've got a slightly better stone to hit against. <laughs> I've thought of an improvement to the stone we've been using for the last 10,000 years. But did you, did you, when you were writing about it, did you, did you come away feeling grubby that, that some of the attitudes you're having to sort of... Um, 
You know, the men in his attitudes. Yeah, yeah, sort but of tackling, you, yeah, tackling. but I've sort because I've been doing that that International Men's Day yeah. thing on International Women's Day, the Wednesday International Men's Day thing for a, pretty much a decade. Yeah, I've sort of experienced it because it was sort of funny to begin with, and then there were people who got a little bit angry, but the attitude of the anger from both sides has grown a little bit. Yeah, uh, and yeah, and and I think I just sort of feel like the Wednesday asking Wednesday International Men's Day on International Women's Day is the marijuana that leads on to asking when's White History Month, you know, which shouldn't be, yeah. that shouldn't be a question, right? When's yeah. White History Month? Yeah. That's, ob- that's obvious yeah. why there's not yeah. a White History Month. Yeah. And yet we seem to have slid backwards, you know. I think 10 years ago, anyone asking that would have just gone, what the fuck is Yeah, that? but there's a, there's, the, there's a sort of culture of, of the, the just asking culture, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just asking. I don't even want an answer. Yeah, uh, but uh, it, is, uh, it is not wanting an answer. Yeah. That, so that, you know, that little thing that was just a joke for me, it does sort of epitomise so much of all of this yeah. and all of that attitude and the kind of rise of the idiot and the rise of ignorance yeah. being a strength, you know, because yeah. to, to be thinking you're strong by asking when's International Men's Day because there isn't yeah. one, but there is one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. To think you're, to, you know, to not, to not even bother to go, maybe I'll just Google this. But, but just all, an awful lot of this, though, is tied up in, um, the, 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 you know, the end of deference. And we, the end of deference is a good thing, isn't it? That we, we shouldn't we should we shouldn't be deferent, yeah. and that for too long people were kept in their place by deference, weren't they? So we've got rid of that, but that's resulted in blokes going, <laughs> "Why isn't there white history month?" <laughs> yeah. It's, well, I mean that I mean that that's such a fantastically stupid question, but um, but but you know, it's, just asking, it, Rich. You, you, sort of, <laughs> you sort of just think, why? You know, if I said, "Look, I think I should play for England. I'm going to play for England at football." And I'm, I think I can do it, and I'm going to do it. Those folks will go, no, 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 you can't do that because you can't. Yeah. You'll ruin it. You're no good at football, Rich. You can't play for yeah. England. <laughs> and it seems to be. Yeah, but how hard can it be? <laughs> how hard can it be? I'm sure I could do it. But you know, that's the thing. It's it's not. It's almost like there's they're looking at one class, one group of people thinking, oh, you know. Yeah. But they're not. They're not. They, if if it was turned on them, if anyone came to anybody and said, I think I'm going to have a little crack at your job. I think I'll be good at it. Yeah. You know, everyone will go, fuck off. You know, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you need to know about... Well, look how defensive comedians are. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to know how to do something. So, yeah. like, to the idea of, ex, you know, expertise or people who've studied things uh, no longer <laughs> having to be listened to. It's, you know, it'll be, that'll be, it'll be interesting to see the fallout of that because, like, it, you know, if countries become, you know, willfully ignorant... Surely any country well, that goes, I'm not going to be willfully ignorant, I'm going to stick with the science and the facts, is going to prosper through disease and through war. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, through yeah. But, 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 that, but that, that's the... I mean, at the few gigs I did in the summer that we were doing, I had the pub landlord say, you know, this government needs to get its finger out and come up with a vaccine as soon as possible so I can refuse to take it. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're holding up my fun. <laughs> and, you, and you think, well, that, that's not that far from no. um, now a lot of you know and uh, and the thing is it, and again I think you go is it, this sort of there's a crust of people behaving like that and they yeah. colour they colour it for everyone else I sure. think it's like I mean I uh, I mean I do re- you know the, 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 you look at the Trump f- phenomenon there's obviously in America a lot of people who can't vote Democrat regardless so they probably held their nose and voted for him then there's obviously the, the people who went to his rallies and they're the story but we don't know how representative they are of his actual vote blog. But they're the tail wagging the dog. Yeah. And they're the, how the age is being coloured. Um, and and that's, the, that's sort of what's happening now, is, there, is, is that crust of people are starting to control the discourse. And that's really... It's, it, it's worrying. I mean, if it, with a historian's hat, you with a historian's hat, and you go, "Well, that's very interesting." And uh, <laughs> who, who knows where this will lead? And uh, rather than rather than sort of, um, you know, uh, shitting the bed about it, <laughs> it's, it's strange. I mean, the va- vax- anti-vaxxing, which is which, you know, got rumbling sort of twenty-five years ago. I yeah. remember an old friend of mine who's a doctor saying, you know, the anti-vax people are going to have the deaths of so many people on their hands, and they're and they're going to say it's nothing to do with them. And he. He was right. Yeah. So, so uh, any hope that, for the but, future? Or, or was he right? We don't know because because it, it's not history yet. That's, That's the thing. True. It's current affairs. It doesn't count. <laughs> when I I remember when we when I first went to do my history degree in 1987, it was 1962 was when history either ended or began depending right. on your point of view, which yeah. whichever you're looking at it. So it was 20 it was 25 years. It's the it's the statute of limit was the statute of limitations yeah. in academic history at the time, and I think that 
I think that stands. I think that, you know, so what would be 20, 2045? We can look back. We are history. Yeah. And I'll be, I'll be in my mid, mid to late 70s, my late 70s. So, you know, maybe, maybe, we get, maybe you get, because it would be, I mean, people talk about time machines back. It'd be really great to time machine 100 years of the future and read the history, but not just for the spoilers, you know, like, uh, but, but, <laughs> but to find out yeah. what they think of us. Yeah, definitely. And who makes it through? You know, I think that's. I think it's just fascinating who makes it through and who yeah. doesn't. Because you know, history will occasionally throw up these personalities who've survived enough in the books to still be there, but are not in anyone's public consciousness yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. And there's obviously the big players that will. But even that, like in that's so why I think, like in ten thousand years' time or five thousand years' time, you know, who's going to be remembered? Anyone from the twentieth century? Hitler. That's nah. probably. I think, the, I think it'd be the Wright brothers. <laughs> Maybe. You know, someone who invented something. Yeah, hopefully. You know. Hopefully. Hopefully. But, uh, you know, it's fascinating. Or me and my book. It's fascinating. Could what, I mean, what book? if this is the only book <laughs> that survives that's the history of the 20th century and I become like the chronicler, I become the, the Holland's Head Chronicles <laughs> of the 20th century and the Shakespeare of, um, of uh, the 22nd century writes all his plays based on this book. <laughs> Jackpot. It could, it could happen. Well, that's <laughs> the, all the Roman stuff is the books that survive, and all yep. the, the books that yep. survive are the ones that transform us, and all the books that are lost, we don't. Although we get little well, fragments of That's something. why I wrote it in the hope yeah. that that would happen. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's good enough that it, it deserves, the, I think, all other history. I'm going to devote the rest of my life to erasing all other history books. <laughs> I'm just printing these. Well, there must be a way. Of, there again. must be a way of hacking <laughs> some server and deleting all history books except this one. <laughs> it's a very enjoyable book. Thank uh, you, I've read it cover to cover, which I do not always do. Oh, bless you. With my, my with my interview. <laughs> and I'm going to send a copy of your book to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he'll enjoy it. I think he'll enjoy it. I'm sure he will. Uh, make him tell him he loves you. Make him hold you and tell him he loves you. <laughs> I love I'll you, give it a I go. Love <laughs> I love it. We can't do that. Our generation can't do that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, absolute delight as always to talk to the amazing Al Murray. Don't buy his book. Buy my book. <laughs> Don't buy his book. It's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs>